Everybody, hey Izzy, oh, she is with us. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. How are y'all? Y'all ready for some marketing and coffee, y'all? Let me know. Show me some likes and hugs. And I believe they have hugs. <laughs> I'm still drinking my coffee. So, guys, I see that yesterday everybody really enjoyed the videos, and um. Yeah, I'm hoping to give you guys great advice today. Um, but I want to remind you, oh, I'm doing great, Izio. Had a good night's sleep. <laughs> but I want to remind you guys um, that I am going to be going live at noon Eastern time with Candy Zulkowski as we are doing our weekly series, um, Smart Authors, Smart Author Series, where we are bringing publishing and marketing support to you as an author. So if you guys um, make sure that you tune in at noon. And then if you guys have questions, we're also inviting you guys to come on with us live and participate with on, on that live later on today. So make sure you guys tune in, show up. I have the link here if you want to go check out the website right here well it's if you go on um smart marketing for authors.com it's the main banner you just click on the main banner and it'll take you to our little page that we have created so you guys can learn more about candy and learn more about me um learn more about the show and so on and so forth yeah so if you guys like that let me know i want to see some hearts and likes today um, another thing I want to mention, I don't want to forget to mention, is that we have a nice little support group. Oh, let me hide this. We have a nice little support group here on Facebook, Marketing and Coffee for Authors. <laughs> so to stay up to date and to be in the know of marketing and other such things, I post a lot in my group. Um, make sure you go and join Marketing and Coffee for Authors. <laughs> hey, I like this one. You're feeding my ego today, Izio. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to show you guys. Uh, she says, I am a superb anchor. <laughs> you know what? I enjoy listening to myself talk. <laughs> so, yeah. The next thing I want to get into is um, I wanted to share with you guys some an awesome quote from Anthony Bourdain. And the reason why I'm doing this is because this is what's trending. So the whole idea behind this show is to keep everybody on top of what is trending. So hopefully it could show you. It's not going to show you the whole thing. So I'll have to do it in two parts. So Anthony Bourdain, right? Yes. Anthony Bourdain, he says, I just do the best I can and write something interesting to tell stories in an interesting way. And then and then he moves forward from there. So you guys just do the best you can. Write something interesting. Make it happen. If you're on the fence about writing your book or having difficulties, you guys just reach out to somebody. Um, join a Facebook group. Talk about what you want to do and find people who are going to support you in doing this. But the thing is, nothing happens without you taking action first. So always take action and implementation is the hardest to the hardest of everything in the world, I believe, whenever you do any project. So stay focused, find help if you need help, join a support group, find your your purpose for yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I had um, have some really nice headlines here that I came through and some other alerts for today that we can discuss. <laughs> there you go, Izzy. She says, every morning 
I woke up with the determination to support my friends and work and do the best to show myself and my works. And you know what? That I can see that because every day um, I see her posting in different groups and, you know, taking action. And it's the best way for you to grow your business is to take action. <laughs> so, yeah, Izio, you're awesome. All right. So I found this interesting this morning. Where is my agenda? <laughs> the last remaining blockbuster in the U.S. is hanging on thanks to beer that tastes like red vine licorice. And it pairs great with chocolate and popcorn. Now, the reason why I wanted to mention this this morning and why it matters, it just goes to show that if you are determined to make your business successful, sometimes you have to think outside the box and, you know, make joint partnerships or partner with somebody else to make your business happen. So this is um, the guy who owns this is in, um, let me double check where he is at. He, uh, he is in, it is on today.com. So determination in business and keeping it up, um, you know, to be something. And then he's also branded this. So if you guys get a chance, you need, you need to go and check this out. Um, he's in Bend, Oregon. Yeah, Oregon he has the last blockbuster. And the reason why it's surviving is because of beer. Um, he joined, he's in a joint venture, what it sounds like, or he's made a partnership with 10 Barrel. And they came up with their own beer to go along with this. So, hey, you know, things happen when you stay, when you come up with innovative ideas and stay consistent. <laughs> yeah. Always keep your business up and promoted. Yep. Thank you, Izio. All right. So, yeah, I just wanted to say that because um, and here in the U.S., we have a nostalgic, a nostalgic um you know, with uh, block blockbuster and renting videos, and um, that's just now becoming a thing of the past, thanks to Netflix and Redbox and all those other competitors that push them out. But there's always a way to save your business, and one of the best ways to do that is to be innovative and come up with creative ideas that'll keep you still in the market. All right, next. Now I'm gonna get into a little bit about our marketing news and this first one I have is Amazon Amazon is planning an ad supported video app <sighs> so Amazon has decided to go the way of YouTube and Facebook how do you guys feel about that you think Amazon is a great platform for that um, do you guys see yourself running book ads you know, ads for your books or book trailers on Amazon um, during their live their videos, <laughs> video app. I want to know. Let me know what you guys think about that. And then I wonder, um, uh, you know, I didn't get to read too much into it, but I wonder if how if they're going to be able to monetize it like their affiliate program on, on ad spend. How about Izio saying here? How about making an online seminar of people who really want to show up their business and they can meet each other like in video chat, like a bunch of people in a single, everybody can share the ideas as well as they can see others too. Communication is the main. Um, I believe what you're talking about is a mastermind. <laughs> a mastermind, a community of people. Yeah, there is, um, well, I mean, you can make it into a seminar. They do that all the time. You need a trailer and a publisher, Stephen. <laughs> um, well, Candy's gonna be coming on later. And if you have questions about publishing, that will be a great time for you to join us. It's gonna be at 12 noon. And a trailer, you know, um, there's tons and tons of people who can make you trailers. Um, just really depends. You gotta, um, I would say, before you start searching people out to create your trailer, is come up with a storyline you know, basic screen by screen, what you would like to see happen so that when you these people create a trailer for you, you can get the best results and work together more efficient. 
Because if you have a plan, then the other person can hopefully see the vision along with that plan and it would be cohesive in creating that video trailer. When I did the video trailer for Your Life's Purpose for Michael, um, I took my whiteboard, which is over there, <laughs> and I just did a storyline of what I wanted to see and how I wanted the words to come and um, what overall feeling, what type of music I wanted to use, so on and so forth. So just create a plan before you um, before you go and outsource the work because it's really, really important that your ideas get expressed through your book trailer. All right, he's got me, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop ranting on that. But yeah, <laughs> how do you guys feel about Amazon planning on this ad-supported video app? What do you guys think about that? So another little line from our marketing and coffee deal today. Our headline here: um, People are spending 2.5 times as much time on Facebook apps compared to Google apps. And they're talking not talking about just Facebook itself. They're talking about all the apps that are in conjunction with Facebook. So all those little games that you're playing, um, all the apps that are connected with Facebook, uh, all those type of things that go under the Facebook umbrella is what they're talking about. So yeah, that's huge news. So it just means that, you know, if you're going to do some ads on your business page and you're going to send out some ads that you might want to consider putting them on these apps. So keep that in mind. <laughs> Next. I thought this one was interesting about Firefox. So Firefox data shows we're blocking ad trackers now and not just the ads. So back in, well, the last few, well, forever actually, or a long time, um, we have always tracked, if you if you ever done like a Facebook ad and added a pixel to your website, added a Google tracking code to your website, so on and so forth, you guys know about this stuff, right? So if you're adding these type of things to your website and you're starting to track people, then, you know, now people are blocking that. Nobody wants to be tracked about their ad, um, what they're spending their money on, where they're visiting on websites. Yeah. Yeah, Google is good. I like Google Chrome. I use Google Chrome for a lot because it saves all my passwords. <laughs> but people are getting to the point where they don't, you know, I, I can see it, though. Because don't you get sick and tired of just seeing ads everywhere? Everywhere you go, there's an ad. And you go on, on Walmart.com and you want to buy some socks. And next thing you know, um, you're five pages down the line reading some news article. And there, next thing and then there's socks. <laughs> Somebody trying to sell you socks. Or Walmart trying to get you to come back to buy. And people are getting tired of being tracked like that. And I think it could be um, a little unnerving when... You're looking at something on one site and then you go and you're on another site and you're like, oh my goodness, somebody's they're following me. <laughs> and that type, you know, people want to protect their data and protect themselves. So, you know, it's, it might be a good idea if you don't want to be tracked that way to block ad trackers. But it's not, on the other hand, as a marketer, <laughs> online marketer, um, you really need that data, that, that crucial data to know um, more about your audience to know how your ads are are effective your ads are you know how you know your ad spend is working that data is really crucial so if you guys if one um, if the consumers are blocking the data and we are you know trying to get the data it kind of it makes our job just a little bit harder <laughs> the, the life of a marketer <laughs> so difficult. How do you guys feel about that? I want to hear some heart. I want to see some hearts and some likes this morning. Let me know who you are and what where you're from. I got Izio and I got Stephen Hallfield on with me. And I see I have some more people watching, but they haven't said hello today. It's morning, I know, so you don't have to be grouchy. I got my coffee. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now, I wanted to give you guys five, I want to talk about a little bit about content and 
building a content hub and creating valuable content. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Izio. She's she's supporting me this morning. Look, she's feeding my ego. I need the hearts. I need the love. <laughs> so yeah, creating valuable content is a little bit what I want to talk about right now. So the idea behind content marketing is simple enough. Create useful and engaging content so that people will read it, watch it, love it, and ultimately buy whatever the hell you're selling, right? <laughs> but what are the core ideas that help to make content marketing successful? Okay. What are the core ideas that help make content marketing successful? What do you guys think that is? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit here. I'm going to say, what do you guys think the core ideas that help to make content marketing successful? What, that, what has been successful for you in content marketing? I would like to know that too. So for me, it's to start with value. Um, so to provide real value, it's something that pierces, pierces through all the noise of social media and advertising online, right? Oh, thanks. Look, I prefer basic content for every project advert and also catchy. That's good. That's good. So now let me tell you my five tips here <laughs> in creating valuable content. So the last few, well, the last month or so, I've been playing around with my content and watching my numbers and doing all that stuff, watching other um, marketers who have really great content and seeing, trying to decipher what they are doing because they're deciphering us. Like if you think about it, other marketing marketers are deciphering our tactics while we're deciphering their tactics and trying to funnel hack each other. <laughs> and this, we're all just trying to funnel hack each other at the same time. But from what I've learned is that creating valuable content, especially with social media, is providing that, that relationship building content. For example, I found that if I not only post on my personal page and then I start getting into groups and posting in groups, I'll take one question, right? One question in one day and I'll post it in my personal page and I'll post it in the group. And you know what happens? Just that one simple line of question. I get tons and tons of people who are engaging with my content. Now, the great thing about that is that People are getting to know you. Um, you have they're seeing your face. They're they're talking on your post, and um, if you come back and you're engaging with them, it's even more the better. Yes, sense of service to people the more it makes great a great impact on them. I like that, Stephen. I like that. So the point of is test it out. Go in different groups and just ask a one line question right and do that for a few days and it works really great especially if you you know because now they have those little facebook badges for groups right so i've been in there asking questions that have been getting tons of engagement so now i'm a conversation starter and i'm uh uh you know all those little, little different badges and it makes you look good when you're a conversation starter right because then people want to engage more on whatever you're putting in the group because you're now you now have that badge so you, that means like you're somebody in that group. <laughs> so test it out. I mean, I've, I've done it at a few groups. I had like 400 engagements on one question or one post that I posted in the groups. Then I just kept consistently posting in the different groups. And then now I went back in there and people know me and they like me and they trust me because I've gone back and related to them on the post right or you know spoke with them each on the post gave them just a little bit of me for a day and they're more willing to engage with me because it's like relationship building right so i'm asking you a, a question it could be a little bit intimate like what is your why what 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 inspires you the most 
And then I'm talking to you, uh, building a relationship with you on Facebook by commenting on it. And we're having a small conversation. So then later when I post about something for my business, do you think I, you think I'm going to have a lot of people who are going to be supportive? Yeah, most definitely. So think about that. Now, I believe for authors that this can work hand in hand because when um, we were doing, I did the occasion journey book launch, right? We were doing occasion journey book launch. <laughs> The whole met thing that I wanted them to do was to reach out and build relationships. And over the course of that campaign, part of the strategy was to get into different Cajun, Acadian um, Facebook groups and, you know, get in there, talk to people, get to know people, bring people over onto the personal page, bring people over onto the business page, get people to, um, get people to come on over and engage on our content on our personal and business page by getting to know us, right? So we're constantly posting in these Cajun groups. Uh, one thing, one strategy I used was to um, create a card deck of Cajun words so that we had a download where we can catch emails and stuff like that. So we're in there, we're providing lots of value. Um, and in that, we're at the same time, we're selling the book. We're making people aware of the book. And it was kind of um, a sneaky way to do that when I say <laughs> not sneaky, but subliminal <laughs> way, right? Because I'm helping you learn the Cajun language. You're interested in the Cajun language. And now, you know, coming to learn more about me, now you're seeing that there's a book behind this all and it's coming out soon. And now I'm able to ramp up interest and build my social media pages so that we have an audience to sell to. So let me know what you think about that. If you guys have further questions on that, um, you know, it's all about strategy and thinking outside the box. And that's why it's really important to provide value in your content marketing. Um, so next one. Yeah, well, you know, because the Kate now I'll move on from there. Um, so yeah, you're not just now getting on here. Make sure you hashtag replay if you are liking what you <laughs> sneak level 100. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that it's sneaking. I just say it's outside the box because I'm providing useful content that people want to see and need, you know, they want to see and they, so a lot of, um, after doing a little bit of research about Cajuns and Acadia, a lot of them want to reconnect with their roots. And there's a, you know, if you look into it, there's a, how many people are down in the, the Louisiana Bayou or, or up in Canada, um, you know, who are, who are Acadian. So that market is pretty big, but to get people interested enough to read it is to bring them back home, right? And to teach them something that they want to learn. So how else do you do that? You know what I mean? How else do you sell a fiction book to a small group of people who may be interested and get them to back the book? Because that's the best way to do it, right? But anyway, I, it was it was really successful the strategy. Um, like I said, the, within the first three days, they made a couple of grand. So <laughs> selling books is what I do. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> now this is important. You guys take notes. You want to build a content hub, whether it be on your social media, because now you can build a content hub within your um, Facebook groups. You can put it in your notes. There's there's several. Um, if you go on LinkedIn, you can put your blog post there. But content marketing should connect your business with customers and prospects directly without an intermediary. Okay. Thus, you'll want to own your content hub rather than use a third party site to post all your great work. So that means you're not publishing the bulk of your original creative content on LinkedIn um, or medium and all those different places, right? You don't want to put the majority of your content in one place. 
Because at the end of the day, where do you want to drive your traffic to? Where you're selling, <laughs> where your book is, um, your websites, where you're trying to uh, establish connection for relationships. So instead, use a section or a section of your website and dedicate that to content. Um, so this is come. This becomes really important when you're building your website. Yes, <laughs> thank you, Kelly. When you're building your website. The number one thing you want to have on your website and make sure you plan into is a blog. Why? Because a blog is going to allow you to optimize in a, few, in a few different ways. Okay. One is SEO because your blog is going to allow you to write articles and chalk them full of your keywords so that when Google goes and picks up, it'll see your keywords. And then the more traffic you get, you know, there's a whole bunch of, of little rules. Hey, Kelly, <laughs> the little rules and different things that happens with the Google search engine. So make, you know, the blog is really important. People think, oh, I can have my website and not have a blog. No, you need to have a blog and you need to be posting content on it regularly. It's kind of important. And then some people say, oh, well, I can make money and do all this and that without a blog. But yeah, in the long in the short term, yeah, you're probably making money without a blog. Yeah, you know, it's probably working for you. But the thing is, wouldn't you want to make it a little bit more easier for yourself and have a blog? Um, Stephen Hollyfield, he's asking, would a podcast be effective? Yes, a podcast is effective. I love I, I, my podcast is doing phenomenal. But the thing with podcasts is that you're going to want to get it transcribed. So you can get that done on like rev.com or, or other places, right? Have it transcribed because not everybody likes to sit and listen. For me, I don't have time to sit and listen to somebody for um, three to four hours. So what I do is I look for the podcasts that have the content information. I skim through that, pick out the points that I want to see, and then I'm on to the next thing. So podcasts. All right, and you know, and it's it's an easy way to create a blog post. Very easy way. Create a podcast, and then you're hitting, you know, all those different learning styles too. The for the podcast, you're hitting those who like who are auditory, you're hitting those who are visual, you're hitting those um, you know, the, the, the search algorithms too. So podcasts are great. Um <laughs> hey Kelly and Steven, everybody, if you guys are liking what I got so far, let me know in the comments below. Um, before I have some more to give you guys. I was trying to keep this within 30 minutes. I hope I'm within that. But if you guys want to learn more, you know, let me get my handy dandy picture up here. If you guys want to learn more, um, I'm doing a lot in my marketing and coffee for authors. And we're also doing um, if you guys have more questions, especially on the side of publishing, um, we're going to be answering questions today live at 12. So make sure you guys show up for that. Um, well, if you are my friend or you're already subscribed to follow my stuff, hopefully you'll get notified. But just remember today, um, 12 p.m. Eastern time, I think it's 9 a.m. Central. Um, go ahead and, you know, start looking out for that. And we are going, if you guys are near a computer today, we're going to let you guys come on live with us and ask your questions in a live setting. So, threw myself out of there. Boop, boop, boop. All right. So, next. Um, well, I just wanted to add one more thing. When you're, cho when you're developing your website and you're choosing what platforms to use, like, you have WordPress, you have Kajabi, you have Ruby on a Rails, so on and so forth. Whatever one you're deciding to Wix. Well, I, I hate Wix. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I had to say it. I do not like Wix. They're so evil. <laughs> you guys are so evil. But anyway, make sure that, you know, like Kajabi. Kajabi is an all-in-one system. You have your website, you have your blogging, you have your email marketing, you have everything all in one in Kajabi. I love Kajabi, um, which is why I am a Kajabi expert. But 
if you're going to do it, make sure that it has some way for you to add a blog to your website so that you can, especially like if you're writing really great content on Facebook and you're getting a ton of engagement on Facebook on uh, the different things that you're writing about, you can take that content right there over to your blog and, you know, see how it performs on your blog because it's performing well on social media. So be creative and repurposing that content. Um, then, you know, another one more thing I wanted to say, <laughs> I use um, HostGator. And why I use HostGator for, it's a hosting program for websites, right? And I love it because for like three bucks a month and I pay, I pay for three years in advance, for three bucks a month, um, I get, I can make as many WordPress websites as I want. And it's, the, it's wonderful. So if you're going to have a website, would you rather spend a thousand dollars on a website um, hosting or yeah, Kelly signed up for that. Would you rather spend a thousand dollars hosting a website or would you rather spend a hundred bucks over the course of three years for your website and be able to do whatever you want with it? I'm just saying, Kajabi sites, you're spending um, between $100 to $300 a month just to be on that platform. Wix, you're spending, what, $25 to $40 plus whatever, plugins plus this plus that, just to use that platform, right? Whereas if you go on HostGator.com, I have an affiliate link, by the way, so you can save a little bit more money. <laughs> but you go on hostgator.com, um, you know, create a you can create your website using WordPress and you'll use all those free great WordPress tools. Um, and I'll, I might do some training on how to use um, a tool called Elementor because it's really simple to use and help, you can build out your WordPress site really easy um, and make it happen. But yeah, you guys think about saving money in the long run because I, I hate, I you know, I hate to see People when they use Wix or Weebly and all that, but they 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 just they just keep the that they don't spend the extra money to have the domain be theirs and look professional. And it, uh, to me, when you have a business and you want to be professional, it's it's important to spend that little bit of extra money because it, you know Wix.com and Weebly.com those don't those don't look credible. <laughs> you know what I mean? But having your own domain.com, whatever even .net, you want to look credible you know, online, and it's really important to be credible. So if, you know, if you guys build your own platforms, pay the money, the little bit of money up front, and, and think long term, it will work out fine for you. You're going to pay 100 bucks for three years, you can have unlimited websites. So if you decide that the book thing doesn't work for you. The next thing you want to do is the coaching thing. You can build a website for that. All you have to do is pay the domain. Would you rather pay $15 up front and have, be able to create a new website? Or would you be able to want to spend, you know, hundreds of dollars and start over and start over and start over on a hosting platform? Y'all let me know. What do y'all think about that? Um, so yeah, next thing. Making your content accessible, right? And I should have put this into things so I could pop it up on the screen. I, I love this platform, you guys. Um, so one of the things you likely hear about as uh, as a, a marketer, a content marketer, right, is how to reach as many people as possible. Reach is so important. So we tend to talk about these things regarding finding the right audience and meeting them where they already are by participating in social media conversations and, and optimize our content for, for search engines. However, there's another way to maximize your reach and it's all about web accessibility, okay? Web accessibility is the practice of ensuring customers and potential customer, customers and potential, I wrote this, <laughs> potential customers who have disabilities, right? and can access and interact with your content, which is why um, when Steven was talking about the podcast, I wanted to bring this up. You're gonna wanna be able to create, it's like having your book, right? And having people, 
Like for me, I hate reading books on this little phone. I like to fill the pages. I like to flip the book, right? So I'm not going to sit and read a book on a, on a, on a Kindle. I want to have the physical book. Um, but what about the those who are disabled? And that Audible platform opens your book up to a whole nother range of people, correct? So that's where I'm talking about making your content accessible. Accessible. <laughs> In the morning. So yeah, you guys. Let me know what you think about that. It's really important that you're able to reach as many people as possible um, in all different markets. So I like this song. This is a good morning song. Listen, y'all hear this? All right. So you're going to connect with your consumers, you're going to connect with your customers, you're going to build relationships, and you're going to start building that author platform the way you're supposed to, you guys. If you guys have any other suggestions for me for my morning show, I'm going to try to come with you guys with the trending um, headlines, trending news, um, give you guys some great tips. If you learned anything today, let me know what you learned. And if you guys can do me a favor, because I forgot to ask earlier, go ahead and share this with your friends and, you know, point out the best parts that maybe they'll like to hear about. And if you know somebody who needs to hear something that I said today, you know, sharing is caring <laughs> for your friends and family. All right. So with that being said, I am going to get off. I got to get ready for the show that we're going to be doing at noon with Candy Zolkowski. And um, I want to remind you guys, once again, to submit your questions. Go to smartmarketingforauthors.com. And guys, click on that first banner that's at the top. And it'll take you to the Smart Marketing for um, the Smart Author Series page where you guys can submit your questions. Or simply just join us at 12. And you guys can ask your questions in the chat or comment below. So you guys, keep, keep an um, eye out for all of that. And I want to thank... I, I'm talking about my dog running through my words. I want to thank everybody who came on today and showed me some love and watched. I think at one point I was at like seven viewers, so I'm kind of happy with that. Um, you are welcome, Kelly Carson. How you are? Thank you so much, Stephen and Ezio. As always, thank you guys for showing up and showing out on my broadcast. With that being said, I want to say bye. I'm putting on the music.